Game five tips off in a few hours, but is there any hope that Miami can keep their season going? And when the season does end, will the Heat be able to improve their roster? We dive into some of the latest news from around the league on a potential trade target. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. I'm Wes Goldberg, editor at allyoucanheat.com. Joining me as always, credentialed Heat Media member David Ramil. However you're tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, your favorite podcast app. Thanks again for making us your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. Guaranteed that's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right. So full disclosure, usually we have a pretty good plan of how we're going to do this show and stuff, but I'm having a hard time trying to figure out how to do today's show because we're at odds a little bit. Wes Heads and David Heads in a little bit of a disagreement here on whether or not it's time to have the offseason conversation or not. Maybe it's too early because the Heat still do have a Game 5 to play on Wednesday night. I guess I'm at the point now where even if the Heat do win Game 5, and I don't think they're going to. And by the way, Jaime Hawkeyes Jr. out for the game with a hip injury. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But they're not going to win this series. So are we just waiting on the results to be official, even though we know where this is headed, before we could do the offseason talk? Is that where we're at, David? Yeah, it kind of feels that way. I, I just don't see how... You know, it's disconcerting, but the season basically ended the second Kelly Oubre rolled into Jimmy Butler's knee, and there was no way for them to bounce back. Celtics fans can complain as much as they want to or gripe or talk about their superior team and 64 wins and everything else and how their roster is more superior up and down and Jim Mazzulla is a better coach and everything else, but the reality is we'll never know how Miami might have been able to compete because they lost their best player in Jimmy Butler, a player who's had very high levels of success against that same Celtics team. Maybe not against that necessary roster, but in the past, the postseason. A lot of people also pointed to the fact that Miami lost during the regular season. Well, Jimmy Butler doesn't really care much for the regular season. It's all about the results of the postseason. The point being that now we're basically just ticking the seconds away until the season does end. If they can pull off a miracle in Game 5, it'll be fine. It'll be exciting for a lot of Heat fans. But I don't think it just does anything more than delay the inevitable. Yeah, and that's exactly where I'm at at this point because, yeah, they, they might go into game five, shoot 53.5% from three-point range the way they, get, they did in game two, come back in game six. They're not going to win three straight games over this Boston Celtics team. It's just not happening. So this series is over, and it that's okay. You know, it, it sucks. It was sort of a bummer of a season. It never really felt like this season got off the ground because it was just injury after injury, 35 different starting lineups. It's like, when are we going to see this thing? And then there was that week in April where they put up, they got healthy all of a sudden. A sh- they strung together a few wins, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Like, we're actually going to see what this team really looks like and what it can be. Terry Rozier kind of finding his footing, all this stuff. And yeah. then Terry Rozier gets hurt. And then Duncan Robinson gets hurt. And it then, you know, the wheels kind of come loose a little bit. And then you end up stumbling back into that playing tournament that you were trying so desperately to get out of. And because you're in that playing tournament, Kelly Oubre lands on Jimmy Butler's knee and Jimmy Butler goes down. And when you flirt with a disaster, that's what happens. It's the point that I made yesterday. And it's just, it, it, and it just is a bummer because instead of getting what could have been even a sequel to this Heat Celtics rivalry, this doesn't feel at all like a sequel. This doesn't feel like another installment of what we've seen over the last half decade because Jimmy Butler's not on the court. And to your point, David, like it's just without Jimmy Butler, this is not the same series. And it's just weird seeing those uniforms go against each other on the, on, on in those arenas and Jimmy Butler not be a part of it. And so instead of a sequel, it just feels like a weird spinoff. And and that's sort of where we're at. And, and the Heat just don't have a chance in this series. They don't. They're too hurt. And no amount of heat culture and next man up and then the next next man up in the case of guys like Jaime Hawkins getting hurt and all this stuff, that doesn't work. You Eventually, you just need your best players on the floor to win a championship. No roster full of Haywood Highsmiths and DeLon Wrights has ever won a title in the NBA. So you need you need high-level talent at some point in the NBA. And the Heat just, their, their best players are, are mostly hurt right now. So that's sort of where I'm at. And it's just a, a fait accompli that this is going to be over. 
Mm. And so I'm ready. I'm ready for the talk. I'm ready for the offseason stuff because now we have two years of this team being in the play in mix, and that's not good enough. This team needs to be better. I know that the postseason is what matters the most, but you can't be dabbling with the play in tournament. You got to be better than that. Right. I think we can agree on that. And then how do you get so how do you get better? You think the play in is agree. good? I think that's I don't care. I don't care. I don't you should. Care. I, Jimmy I mean, Butler got hurt in the play-in tournament. No, yeah, that, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's like saying like, like, like it's ridiculous to say that you know they played that one extra game against Philadelphia and that led to injury like that. But it did. It, it literally happened. It, it's kind of you know again saying that it happened as a result after the results already been ha- you know already happened. It doesn't you know they could have they played two play-in games last year and he was perfectly healthy. It, it's not. You know that's not the kind of flirting with disaster. Maybe it's like it's it's kind of tempting fate a little bit, in the sense that you play 82 games and you're not able to accomplish everything you want to. But I mean, there was a clear reasoning for that: the fact that they did have injury, that maybe Jimmy took his foot off the gas, that they were incorporating new players, that players like Tyler and Bam maybe didn't take leaps that they expected. There was lots of reasons for Miami to wind up in the play-in tournament, but you can't say Jimmy's injury occurred because they were in the play-in tournament. And I still don't care. Like, honestly, I, it, it's not fun. And for fans griping about it, it's no more difficult for them than it is for us to come up with, to cover 82 games of watching this team kind of scrabble to 98 points on offense, you know, with a low offensive rating, and to find them try to grind out these wins and have, I don't know how many clutch games over the course of the season. Like, that's much more challenging on our end than it is for fans to watch this and be entertained by it. And having said all that, like I've been entertained by the reality that we've been able to witness over the last few years with Jimmy Butler on this roster. I know what the process is. I know it's about grinding these games out, about dra- dragging them through the mud, et cetera. But you've been to the finals two times. You're one shot away from being able to advance to, past the Eastern Conference finals into the finals a third time over that stint. If not for the lockout, I'm sorry, and not for the COVID shortened season, who knows what would have happened when they got swept by Milwaukee. Like, They've had postseason success. Like this team since 2010 has been to six NBA finals. Yeah. Nobody's this is a very good team. Sure. Yeah. Nobody's taking but, away the past experience, but you can't but I mean the 82 you can't games, just run it back. Yeah, but the 82 games don't don't matter when you look at it from that perspective. Like it's well, they like matter oh, yeah. in terms of getting into the playoffs. That's what the first 82 okay. games are for. But what you do in the playoffs matter. But what you do Sure, in the but you gotta matter. get there. Okay. <laughs> but they did. They did get there. I know they, they did. They did get there last year. They did get there last year. I'm not saying anything about the past. My point is now they have an off season where, like, I, you and I agree on this. This is probably the second best era of Heat history. If it depends on what you want to do with the Dwayne Wade Shaq era, like, is that even sure. an era? It was so short, like, whatever. Sure, sure, sure. But it, I'm not taking anything away from what we have experienced during the Jimmy Butler era. My only question now is, what do you do this off season to keep it going? Or do you move on past the Jimmy Butler era, which I think is a real conversation worth having at some point, whether or not we have it today. I just, I am saying nothing of what this team has accomplished. I'm only talking about what happened this year isn't good enough. And if you're a front office, you can't just be like, well, that was a hell of a ride. Like if you're a front office, your job is to improve the team and get better and try to, and, and try to make a run at it next year, right? And we know that that's what the Heat front office is gonna do. So I guess my question is like, uh, here, here's the big question that I have. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, that's it. That was it. Like, I think there's a concern from some Heat fans that they're going to look back at the season and say, you know what? Had we somehow been able to stay healthy, who knows what this team would have? Do you think that? I, I'm fairly certain that Miami would have been much more of a challenge had Jimmy Butler been able to stay healthy. Had Terry oh, sure. Rozier, yeah, nobody's doubting that. Robinson. But would they have been able to get to the finals? Because that's the thing. I, th- I think so. I think so. If you find a way to beat Boston with a healthy Duncan, Terry Rozier, and Jimmy Butler, I, I mean, who else in the East is a you know that kind of level of competition, right? Let me I back mean, up. There was one seed for the reason. Bit. If you were just healthy, and you still you were healthy, and then you make the Rozier trade midseason, I don't think that this team would be the eighth seed going up against Boston in the first round. I don't know if that's what you meant by making it through Boston, like right now, but just like the road would have gone through Boston. They won 64 games of the number one seed. The road goes through Boston in the East. But I, 
I think I they could have gone to the finals again. I, I do believe that. I do believe that they could have gone to the finals again. I don't think they're going to knock off Denver. I don't think Boston's going to knock off Denver. I don't think anybody's going to knock off Denver. I mean, Minnesota has as good a shot as any. Maybe, Anthony Maybe Edwards. Minnesota does. But I mean, again, that's that's a very good team in yeah. their own right, and and they I the present nuggets. they present much more of a a challenge from a you know I guess just a matchup perspective than even Boston does. I just think that Miami, we've seen what they accomplished and what they've done last year, the year before, you know, two years before that in the bubble. You know, whatever. I know a lot of people are, have very short term memories and say that's all in the past and these are different teams and everything else like that. But I still had a belief that they could have accomplished something in the postseason. I, if this team is healthy, and that's what I was wondering is if they were going to catch lightning in a bottle again and get healthy at the exact right time after not being healthy all regular season, if they were healthy, I think that they could have made a run. I guess my point is they haven't even. Like, this team is not healthy. It's not an exception. Maybe an exception is 35 different starting lineups and how injured they were this particular year. But this team generally is not healthy because they're older, they're undersized, and they have to work so hard to 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 grind out these games. It's just a really sure. hard thing to do. You said that the regular season doesn't matter. Well, you got to get through it. You got to play these games. And you got to win yeah. enough of these games to get make it to the playoffs. And it's just so damn hard for this team to even win enough games to get into the playoffs. And it doesn't need to be that hard, is my point. And all no, of this stuff is we've seen it, and that, we've seen it, and we've seen it. You know what we haven't seen? A championship. We still haven't <laughs> seen a championship. And so, like, how good is good enough, you know, is 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 a worthwhile questioning, and it's a little bit more existential to have and uh, and all these things. But I, this team needs to make it easier on themselves, is my point. Because if you don't make it easier on yourself, then you're just going to end up grinding and then running into a wall when all these other teams like Boston and Denver are perfectly healthy because they've been able to just kind of chill for most of the regular season in a way that the Heat can't. So that's sort of my point here, but we're going to keep having this conversation plus uh, an evaluation of the young players. Jaime Hakez Jr., his series might be over. His rookie season might be over. What do we think about what we got from the Heat rookie? We'll talk about all that next year on Locked on Heat. Today's episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Does mom have a sweet tooth? I know my mom does. She loves getting cakes, cookies, whatever you call it. Whatever you can think of, she'll she'll absolutely devour that. Is she a tech enthusiast? Well, you maybe want to get her a new phone or a new tablet or something along those lines. Is she a beauty connoisseur? Maybe get her some makeup kit or something to hair, you know, styling her hair. Or is she outdoorsy? No matter what she's into, you can make her smile with a fruit or flower bouquet makeup, tech gear, workout wear, and so much more. Whatever you're interested in, you'll get all of your Mother's Day gifts all in one place. That's DoorDash. Get 50% off your next order, up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower, convenience, grocery, or retail order now, but only if you use the code LOCKEDONNBA. That's LOCKEDONNBA. Order using DoorDash today. Terms do apply. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. It's a winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. We'll be right back. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. You mentioned FanDuel. Do you know how this? You know how this, bleh. Do you know who has the third best odds to win the championship right now, third according to best. FanDuel? You know the top two: uh, Boston and Denver. Third best. Let's see. The Knicks. Good guess. No, that's what I would have thought. It's the Ooh. it's the Timberwolves. Ah, good Plus nine hundred. I guess the idea is if they beat Denver, then they kind of have a clearer path. Maybe I, I guess is the idea there. No, it um, makes sense. I was only sort of half joking, like Anthony Edwards. Like I still have Denver in that series, but it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be fascinating, man. The matchups are, are they present a challenge, you know? Yeah, a lot of different things there, but you know, I, it's uh, I, I guess it kind of shows that Miami, they've been able to accomplish something over the last few years despite not really having dominant matchups in any particular area like that's 
I mean, to your point about injuries and everything else like that, Miami just doesn't – they've never had at any point a matchup where you have to favor a Miami player. Like, Bam, hmm. like the flip side of him being, you know, more mobile and being able to, in theory, get to the basket more and everything else like that, he's just not able to overpower anybody at the center position. So maybe there are certain matchups that he can take advantage of, but those are very few and far between. Like, even – and we're seeing this right now with Porzingis – Porzingis is infinitely slower than Bam Adebayo, and yet the size difference presents a problem for him. So I'm curious to see in Game 5 what happens with Al Horford, although Horford, you know, a step slower at this point in his career, but still a pretty stout defender. I wonder if Bam's able to take advantage, advantage of that to some degree. Yeah, Kristaps Porzingis officially ruled out for Game 5 Wednesday night. Not necessarily a surprise there, but it is now official. Um, Jaime Hakas Jr. also ruled out for this game could be the last game of the heat season. And then therefore the last game of Jaime Hakez's rookie season. Um, I want to do a quick evaluation of the young guys in this series, specifically Jaime and Nikola Jovic. Um, this is a very young heat team facing a very good Boston Celtics team because of the injuries that they're dealing with the Jimmy Butler and Terry Rozier. They are down not only two of their best players, but two of their oldest players too. And you take the average age of the heats starting lineup and it's closer to the Orlando Magic than it is the Boston Celtics. This is a yeah. this is by all intents and purposes just a young team doing their best in their first ever playoff series for some of these guys like Jaime and and Nico. <laughs> and so one of my and I had that I and I kept preaching this. The expectations need to be low. I know it's Heat Celtics, but it's not really Heat Celtics. It's kind of a team wearing Heat uniforms versus this <laughs> versus a better Celtics team than last year. Yeah. And given all of that, I think my big takeaway from this series, other than, boy, it's a bummer we didn't get to really see the real version of this, is Jaime and Nikola are dudes. Like, these guys are 16-game players who stepped up. It wasn't, like, amazing Jaime Hakez games, but it was it was fine from him, and he had moments. And then Nikola Jovic has definitely shown flashes, and that's a guy that does not look... Neither of these guys look scared of this moment, look scared of the stage, and they attacked... Boston the best they could and they're only going to get better right and I think if there's a takeaway here is okay it was cool Jaime Hakez Jr. had a great rookie year what's he going to look like in the playoffs Nikola Jovic making some progress developing in the second half of the season what's he going to look like in the playoffs and I think we answered that these guys are these guys are playoff players they're not afraid of the moment they are very competitive and they rose their game I thought in both of both instances here I think you got to be really proud of that if you're the heat and, and 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 you know optimistic of what that looks like in the future Yes, and also uh, perhaps this is a little bit against type for me, but I, I think you also have to be somewhat cautionary. I think you also have to look at whatever progress they made, and you have to – if if your goal is, and what you're saying, and I think you're expressing the opinion of a large percentage of the Heat fan base and our listenership, certainly, you have to be able to evaluate these players honestly and fairly. And despite whatever success they've had and whatever – Courage they showed in absolute adversity during the postseason, however limited it might have been. I don't know that you can look at either their, either player and make the determination that they'll achieve stardom at any point in time. I know it's been a social media, Twitter discourse of yeah, late nobody, over the last couple of days. I'm not talking about stardom. Like, let's, let's pump the brakes on this stuff. Like just good players, helpful players to a playoff team. Yes. That's all I'm talking about here. That that's fine. That's fine. Look, I I I 100 agree with you. I 100 agree with you. But the idea that you don't trade, I mean, I made this point, I can't remember exactly when the first link, it was when when he was asking out of Houston, when James Harden was asking out of Houston. And I remember people saying, Tyler Hero shouldn't be included in a trade. And I, I was hosting the show by myself at that point in time. And I remember saying, are, are you people ridiculous? Like that was Harden in his prime as a Hall of Fame level player capable of bending and creating an offense. He is the system for a reason, at, especially at that point in time, not even this later version of him. And people were like, I don't know if you gave up Tyler Hero. Are you kidding me? You pack his bags and pat him on the back and say, thank you for your service. But the Heat, and we'll the see heat you themselves, around not just Heat fans. The Heat themselves yeah. have fallen into this trap over and over again as a front office. We can go back to giving James Johnson a huge contract, Tyler Johnson a huge contract. Their developmental pro projects they fall in love with them and they don't want to give up what they've done. And I think that helps in some cases. Like, I'm glad they didn't trade Bam out of bio when he was barely playing his first two years, right? Because you get, and because now you have this. Uh, but I, 
I don't know where I'm at necessarily in the trading Nikola Jovic or Jaime Hakas Jr. conversation, but they have a price. They're not untouchable. To me, the only untouchable oh, no. player on this roster is Bam. And that's just that's I just even me. Go that far. And yeah. um that would well, even I just, go that far. I mean, sure, if the if the Nuggets were like Jokic for Bam, then you trade him. But like no, I mean, just we in the realm about... of possible players who could get traded, yes. you're not you're not trading Bam for those players. I, I look, I can I can I add to something that I said in yesterday's podcast and maybe for anybody who didn't listen sure. to it and didn't understand my point. You, you know, everybody wants Miami to achieve a championship, right? They want them to win the title, et cetera. Well, I don't know if, if we're all griping about, oh, they're in a playing tournament, et cetera. They're not good enough to win, et cetera. Well, the only path to really improving this team is to blow it up. And if you're looking at how to blow it up, you're not going to get fair and requisite value for anybody else on this roster. What do you mean by blow it up? To, to like blow it like trade like everybody, trade core like trades for and and reset, yes, or to go players. get a star. There's only there's only three core players on this roster. Everybody else is just hanging on or figuring out their place among the high. When you say blow it up, do you mean take a step back and then start playing for lottery picks, or do you mean like yes. trade core pieces yeah. well, and okay, for a star? Well, that's well, that's my question. Perhaps, perhaps. But I don't know. There's also I don't know if there's a complementary star that can change the trajectory of this team if you keep Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero. The only player that you can get that star level player for is Bam Adebayo, and I don't know what star level player. And I'm talking right. top five. Yeah, top five. A player real a, a is, title, a number one guy on a title winner. Right. You know, and and how many of those are there? Look, look, look at the champions of the last few years. You got LeBron James when he was still aging, but still at his peak, and AD was right there as far as a top yep. ten player in the bubble. Definitely. Then you had Steph Curry, Giannis at his peak. You know, like there have been a number. Of, yeah, you didn't call it Jokic player in the NBA. That's, I mean, let's go through them. How many? That's right. That's it. Jokic, that's it. Jokic not getting traded. We're talking about could be the number one guy on a championship team. And that, that list is not as long as people think it is. Jokic not getting traded. Doncic not getting traded. Giannis, TBD, but I'd be very surprised if he were traded. Yeah. Uh, SGA not getting traded. Joel Embiid, I don't even know if he's on this list just because of the injury concerns, but I yeah. don't, I'm not yeah. getting any indication that, and like, I think it's a fair conversation to have of, and we don't have to have it now, would you trade Bam for Embiid? I th like, based on Embiid's injury history and everything, like, that is not just a call that into the commissioner right away. That is a front office right. meeting for several hours, okay? That's right. that's that kind of conversation. Kawhi, same type of deal. I know he won in 2019, but this dude hasn't finished a postseason basically since then, right? And so I don't, would you trade Bam for Kawhi? I am i wouldn't, I, fr I just, right. I wouldn't, you know? Um, and then that's sort of like, that might be the end of the list. Like Tatum, Devin Booker, like these guys are really good. I don't know that they're the number one player on a championship team. I think the Celtics could win the championship this year, but that's going to be more of like a, a, hey, the best starting five in the NBA type of deal more than it is a Jason Tatum accomplishment, even though it would be an accomplishment, but still. Uh, when, like, I don't consider Tatum on that time, level. Yeah. When was the last time that a title winner didn't have a top five player on the roster? And I can't think of any other than 2014 Pistons. San Antonio. Mm. Yep, that's it. And that was... Yeah, and that was you had three Hall of Fame players and a Hall of Fame coach and an incredible systemic change in the way they approach basketball. And you still had underrated high, bench. high level, yes, an exhausted players. and then an exhausted Heat team on the other end that got through a week that's right. conference that year. That's right. That's right. They beat up the East. They got there. They're like, oh man, we've been to the finals four years in a row. This is we can't keep up with pass, 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 easy bucket, pass, so pass, 10 years. pass, easy bucket. You're talking about 2014. Right. We're talking about 10 years. 10 and years before ago. that, and that's LeBron, a different NBA. The, 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 the talent and the talent in the NBA now is so much deeper than it was 10 years ago. I mean, that's what we're talking about right now. And so yeah. you need. I don't know which one of those guys are going to become available. So to your point, like, what do you do? I still think that there's something to be said about improving the roster. And trying to find that next Jimmy Butler, who might have not been considered that guy, and then was able to elevate his game in Miami and became that guy. And Jimmy Butler was that guy for yeah. three or four years here. And I just my question is whether or not he still is that guy at 34, going on 35 years old. But we'll continue having this conversation. Who could be that guy? What trade targets are out there? We'll talk about that next year on Locked On Heat. 
Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Uh, you know, I've, we've talked about it before. Monopoly Go. Oh, where the hell is the ad read? There we go. Uh, <laughs> the game off. We got to pause here and talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build each other's boards. You can build uh, each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. Unique stickers that you can trade with friends to compete albums for big prizes. You can get cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. There are hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. And there's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go, like a classic game, but just now available to go download for free on Google Play or the App Store. It's game on with Monopoly Go. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and on your favorite podcast app. There was a report by Sean Devaney that a Western Conference executive says that the Heat are a team to watch if Kevin Durant is traded this summer. There's a whole conversation to be had about the Heat's assets, what they'd be willing to move, what their value is, kind of what we were talking about before, David. Yeah. Um, and it's a worthwhile conversation to have. And the more I've thought about it, you know, it's not so interesting to me to debate the value of Tyler Hero. It feels like we've been doing that for years. I think we know what Tyler Hero is as a as a trade asset now and what he is as an NBA Can you clarify that just in, in a simple statement? Because, again, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you know, Donovan Mitchell's available. All it takes is Tyler Hero. Like, maybe we went through this I don't think anybody last year in their right mind actually think that that's the case. But it Tyler Hero is, at this point a really good sixth man. Might I say the best sixth man in the NBA. He has an award for it. Uh, it's about, at this point, everybody coming to terms with that. And by the way, getting that at the end of the lottery, that's a great player. That's a great pick at the end of the lottery. It's just about everybody else, including probably Tyler Hero himself, coming to terms with that reality. Well, it's well, we say- just talked about it. There's 450 players in the NBA, and of which there are five maybe game changers that could really take you to a title. So and and hero can help a good hero would be so helpful right. to a team where he doesn't have to be yes. the number one scorer. On and yes. even when Jimmy Butler is healthy, because of the way Jimmy treats the regular season, that responsibility is thrust onto Tyler Hero's shoulders, and it's not fair to him. It's not fair to him and the expectations uh, of him from the fan base or the front office or anybody else. So um, that's what he is. I think Nikola Jovic is a is a really good young player. Is he the centerpiece of an all-star trade package? No. Can he be part of it? Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Jaime Hakez, exactly. ditto. Same thing. So yes. uh that's what we're dealing with here. He also have a you know Terry Rozier, who could be a helpful guard for the right team. That's a bit a little bit more situational on a on a de- on a decent contract. Uh Jimmy Butler, I don't know what kind of trade value he has as a 34-year-old going on 35. Uh, with the contract that he's got and then the extension looming here. Hmm. I don't even know if the Heat would be willing to trade him. I think it would be surprising to most people if he did trade Jimmy Butler, but we're just talking about trade value here. We already mentioned Bam Adebayo and what what his value is. So uh, other than that, I don't know that there's anybody on this. Like In terms of assets, they have three first-round picks that they're going to be able to move this summer. So that's essentially, and and, and no cap space to be talking about. So if they're going to make an improvement, it'll basically be via trade. So that's what we're talking about here. You made the point yesterday, and it's a good one, that just because you have stuff to trade doesn't mean a trade is going to happen, right? We talk about Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Kevin Durant in the past. Heat were in the mix, couldn't get those deals done. Um, it was brought up, it's been brought up, and and Barry Jackson had this today, and I thought it was a good point. Like, just because you talk about the Heat's stuff, and, and we, we have this debate about the value of their stuff, it's not in a vacuum. Right, you st- it's going to be hard to compete with teams like the Pelicans and the Jazz and the Knicks and the Spurs and the Thunder, who have basically the next decade of draft picks at their disposal to use in these deals, and then their own assets, right? Their own Tyler Heroes, their own Nikola Jovic's, all their own stuff. So yes, exactly. They ha- they it's going to these are the competition to go get that star player. It's going to be very hard for the Heat 
to beat out any of those teams. And you've already got David Griffin from the Pelicans saying today they're basically done. They're not running it back. They're trying to make a big move. The Jazz are widely expected to try to cobble together their assets and go get another player, a big name player this offseason. We'll see if that can happen. The Spurs kind of mm. need to do something to get Victor yeah. Wembanyama another running partner because that dude's ready to go right now and they're ready yes. to make a playoff push next season. Uh, we know that the Houston Rockets are going to be aggressive trying to add to their roster and make that playoff push next year. The Warriors are going to be in the mix, and they've got a bunch of interesting young players that they can move if they are willing to do so. So all these things are going to happen. Here's the difference, though, and it's why I'm still slightly optimistic. Last year, again, they tried to get Damian Lillard, and they couldn't. But Dame, for months, was the only name on the market. He was the only one. And... It wasn't necessarily a very compelling one for most teams, but Milwaukee was able to come in marginally sort of quote unquote beat Miami's offer. And we don't need to go down that whole rabbit hole, but they were able to get Damian Lillard and Miami wasn't. The difference between that and now is it's not just going to be one star making a move. It's going to be like half a dozen guys moving around this year, potentially. And so the, just the, the shelf space of stars is so much wider now from the heat to not necessarily choose from, but to kind of go after that, even if they don't get the top guy on the market because they get beat out by the Knicks or the Rockets or the Spurs or the Jazz or whatever, there's going to be other options now. It's not Damian Lillard or Bust anymore, right? It's not going to be that this offseason necessarily. Like there's going to have, they're going to be able to kind of go down the list and try to get their guy. And it reminds me a little bit of the 2019 offseason when. LeBron was on the move, Kawhi, Paul George. Jimmy Butler was not the top of that list. He was not the big fish in that pond, right? Like, the Heat got him for Josh Richardson, (laughs) okay? And he's the one that's gone to the finals. He's the one that emerged as, hey, this guy's an all-star, but nobody thought of him as the number one guy. People were giving the Philadelphia 76ers an A-plus grade for getting a 3 and D player in Josh Richardson and getting off of the cancer that Jimmy Butler was. And saying that the Heat got a C minus. Like CBS Sports gave them a C minus and gave Philly an A plus. And we sure. see how that turned out. You, so if I'm the Heat, I'm looking at, okay, maybe we don't get the top dog here because we don't have the assets to go get them. But can we go get a guy who might be a distressed asset currently, hmm. but we could bring him in, polish him up with some Heat culture, and then we get the next Jimmy Butler on our hands. But isn't that a lateral a, move? I'm not talking about trading Jimmy. I'm just talking about, can you go get that? Can you trade Josh Richardson for that player? Can you trade? Not, we had that. It's funny. But isn't that we a lateral have, move then? What do you mean? To go get another star? Well, a, a star, but not a superstar. Isn't it's that another? Lat- it, it depends, right? It's a, That's a good question, right? Is It would make the team better to pair that, even a distressed asset with Jimmy and Bam. But does it make them good enough to beat Boston and Denver? I suppose is your question. Is the way you're you're kind of framing yes. it? Yes, we just I, talked I, about the it. idea you need a top is that five if you player to win a championship, you can't get a top five player. I do so wonder what's if the, the path heat... to improving this roster in order to be a title <sighs> contender, which is what they've done for the last four years. They they were title contenders for the last four years, and that's the whole part that it's very difficult for people to understand and swallow is that. They were as close as they could possibly get. They improved on the margins. They got that role play. Like everybody's looking at what happened last year in Denver and saying, go get yourself an Aaron Gordon. Like, yeah, again, you know, Aaron Gordon works. Well, I'm not talking about Aaron Gordon. He's, what, what if, what, what if you get, like, uh, my point is, what if you go and trade for, I'm just going to throw some names out there. We don't have to do it specifically. Just, right. I, Trey Young or Donovan Mitchell. Relatively distressed assets at this point, I think. I, I think their value had been higher at other times in their career. And you're able to turn what is a kind of fringe top 10 guy, which is essentially what Jimmy Butler was before he got him. What if, you, what if you're able to trade with Donovan Mitchell and he becomes that guy? You know, oh, I, I think I, that would I, be I the bet, that. right? That I would be that. the bet here. And so then it's not necessarily a lateral move. It's, that's sort of what I, Trey Young has all the talent in the world. Why couldn't he be a top five guy? He's one of the best playmakers in the NBA. Right, like it's sort of yes. it, it, it's sort of a him thing is the reason why he's not. I and, I, I and, will admit, yeah, I will admit to a personal bias against Trey and his style of play overall. Oh, who doesn't have that? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Trey Young, I think is he's the only <laughs> person. The little, even like, Hawks fans are like, we can't stand watching this guy at this point. So, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I mean, I as far as Mitchell is concerned, and I've said this for years. I mean, I, anybody who's been a long time listener knows how we felt about him before the draft and 
you know, they wound up with Bam, so it worked out okay. But at the same time, if you can acquire Mitchell, like I, I don't, you know, it, that's a no brainer to me because he sure. fills that area of need. You were talking about getting that's that's complementary score to take over the the load, the brunt of that scoring load last year. Dame Lillard, well, I mean, if you can get a guy who can do that and stay and is significantly younger. I don't see why you wouldn't do it. And yeah, I mean, he's got questions. As you said, he's a distressed asset. Who cares? Like, I mean, he's he'll be a better version of the player he's been throughout his career. And that's a pretty damn good player, too. And this is what the Heat have done, right? They've taken distressed assets and undistressed them, restressed them. What is it? What happens when you're not distressed anymore? Fresh? What is it? You're unstressed. What's the opposite of unstressed? They've unstressed them. That's that's heat culture, baby, right? And it I don't know that that to me I think might be the move here is and, and I don't know that that player by the way like the top five like ready out of the box hey let's go win a championship yeah. like LeBron in 2010 LeBron in 2016 KD in 2017 like that that player is not probably not available right now okay. but you can't but as a front office you can't just stay pat and just say hey like we're just like that player's not out there so we're just going to kind of chill and do what we're doing you can't do that it's not an option you cannot run it back you had you had a clear excuse not excuse a clear reason to run it back after the finals run last year hey what is this team let's see it really basically like, we had a weird three-point shooting regular season and a weird three-point shooting postseason like we got to try to find like a baseline of what they this still team make is. changes uh well yeah they made the rosier deal in the middle of the in the season but i'm talking about like but you you can't there's no ex there's no excuse to run it back this time you just in the nba you can't run it back two years in a row you could do it one year you really can't do it two years unless you have that top five guy you really can't just keep doing it you got to make a decision right like it, it's really hard in this in this ecosystem to just keep running it back either you take that calculated step back reduce your payroll increase your flexibility and start making you know start moving the chess pieces around to make a move later on or you just sort of bunch up your stuff, go all in the way that the Celtics did. They said, you know what? Screw it. We're going and getting Drew Holiday. We're going and get Kristaps Porzingis. Heck, the way Milwaukee did and said, we're going to break up our core and go get Damian Lillard. And that hasn't necessarily worked out for them. But yeah. it was I, it was the right decision for the Bucks to do. The, the problem they had was the coaching stuff. And that was a whole separate issue. But I, like trading Drew Holiday and getting Damian Lillard was absolutely the right decision for that roster. It's just the other stuff that they screwed up. So it's... You got to do something if you're Miami. We have all, all offseason to talk about it. When does the offseason start? I guess we'll find out. Game five, Wednesday night. We'll be back here with the post-game show of the game we didn't talk about. Thanks for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow us on your podcast app.